Hello and welcome to our podcast today. My name is James. I'm delighted you can join us where we're going to take you through some key questions to help you pass your upcoming ACCA examinations. I'm delighted to be joined by Mr. Rizwan Mania today. This guy has over 17 years of experience, a top tutor for PM, FM, APM. We're going to get through all of his insights today and he is part of the Virtual Institute for Higher Education, VIFI. And a massive thank you to all the team in the background who have put on today's podcast. We're going to get right into it. But Rizwan, feel free to introduce yourself, the CEO, the principal since 2017. Yeah, thank you very much, James, uh, for this introduction, this nice introduction. Yeah, this is Rizwan Mania. And uh, uh, my passion is to teach. I'm teaching since... Uh, last 17 years and uh, uh, right now I'm teaching at an online platform that I'm also running as a CEO and the principal by the name of Virtual Institute for Higher Education and we call this as WIFI. So thank you very much James for inviting me for this today's lovely podcast and let's make it wonderful for the students so that they take benefit and do pass in the upcoming ACC exams. Fantastic. Well, let's get on to our first question. First key question, how to pass your ACCA exams from an expert top tutor? Mr. Rizwan, take us through all of your years of experience. What bits of advice would you give to a student if they're just starting, they're at the professional papers? What's that first key tip that's going to help a student to pass? Great, thank you. And it's a very nice question, uh, uh, honestly. Actually, uh, if you're starting your ACCA or you are in between your ACCA, one thing is very important that I've seen in these years is consistency. People do start their ACCAs, you know, uh, they are very passionate. The first day when they enroll in the courses, I used to remember when we used to take those physical classes and, you know, people used to be very much passionate. Uh, those days they used to start their ACCAs and like, they were like, let's do it in two years and two and a half years or three years and as the they used to go on to the uh, difficult modules i would say uh so starting from knowledge module moving towards skills and professionals and that is where if they start to fail unfortunately because it's a professional paper so uh they just lose their interest so what i feel james is that everybody should have this thing in their mind that consistency is important these failures should not stop you at all you know you 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 will see some problems in 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 your studies you might not pass but come on it's a professional exam so just be consistent and if you are consistent i'm very much sure that you'll be able to make up and you'll be able to do acca or any other qualification right so yeah. first thing, the first message is consistency, which is really key for any student who is uh, who wants to, who is doing ACCA uh, currently. Secondly, what I feel is that uh, you have to learn from your mistakes, right? Uh, during this span, the time period where you are doing your ACCA, so the maximum learning you will have the more beneficial it is. So as, as I always say students that please don't prejudge yourself. You know, what, what I mean to say by prejudge yourself, you know, like students do uh, join the online classes, uh, they take the sessions uh, and once they watch the conceptual videos, so they're like, come on, I'm now ready, right? I'm now ready and I can attempt the questions. That is a misconception because these questions are the main thing or a main source of learning, I would say, because, you know, if you have a knowledge based concept in your mind until and unless you don't uh, convert that into a practical application. Right. So you will not be confident about how the concept should be applied. So my point is that when you start doing the practicing work, that is where your actual learning starts and that is where I've seen a lot of students start prejudging themselves that, wow, why I'm not able to solve the question? I've watched all the videos. That's a misconception, my friend. That is where you start application. You actually implement, apply the concepts, 
and that is where learning starts. So when you're doing the practice work, come on, don't be demotivated. I always say, James, this to uh, students in these 17 years and at WIFI, you know, uh, we are operating in 120 plus countries. You know, there are one students from 120 plus countries taking classes with WIFI. And whenever we have these sessions, these orientation sessions and all, I always tell them one thing. See, when you are solving the questions, right, whenever you do a mistake, just write it somewhere. I know it's a CBE paper now. So uh, if you don't want to write it, just type it somewhere, right? And the maximum number of mistakes you will do, my friend, these are the maximum opportunities you got to learn, right? If you have done 500 mistakes, so don't be demotivated. Don't be disappointed. Thank God that you got an opportunity to learn 500 times <laughs> and take that as a motivation. And definitely, if you just write down the mistakes somewhere, you document that somewhere and just recap where you went wrong. So I'm very much hopeful that in examination, you will not do mistakes that much. I'm not saying that you will not do mistakes, but yeah, the, the possibility of that will reduce so second key message that i want to give is while practicing learn from your mistakes note down the mistakes the more the mistakes you do the more opportunities you have to learn where you are actually going wrong third thing that i want to add here which a uh, lot of position holders have done in the past so uh, i can proudly say that uh, around 73 uh, nationwide position holders have been with WIFI in these seven, uh, five to six years. Uh, for my own APM, I can say there are 25 position holders who have secured national position in APM for this only paper. So what, what I have seen that these students do, they definitely cover their syllabus completely. In ACCA, there is no shortcut. Please, there is no shortcut, right? So you should focus on your course completion. Complete the course. Once you are complete in terms of knowledge-based things, I hope people will understand what I'm saying, knowledge-based, like conceptually, you should be perfect. You should complete each and everything. And then it's all about the practice you do. So uh, sometimes, yeah, they, they are working professionals. As we see, as we meet so many students who work uh, and they study, they are short of time. I do agree. But at least, you know, look, going through the requirements, just write few answers. If very short of time, just make the bullets. Your mind should work every time. You know, you have to make sure that your mind is in practice before you go to the real examination, like a football match or a cricket match in, in our part of the world. You know, for, uh, cricket is very famous and I'm sure for, for you guys, football is very famous, right? So uh, just look at those players, what they do. Do they do the rehearsals or not? Lot of rehearsals, lot of rehearsals. And when we say to the students, do you want to solve mock? They're like, no, 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 no. We'll do it. We'll manage it. No, that's wrong. These mocks definitely prepare you. Uh, and these rehearsals are important. So I would say, yeah, the, the students should complete their syllabus. Practice and focus on mocks is really key if you want to ace paper quickly, fast and complete your ACC qualification. So if I just sum up the four points for the students and for the audience is that you have to be consistent in your hard work. It's not that wake up at 5 a.m. first day, second day, and from <laughs> third day, like, come on, let's sleep. No, consistency is important, okay? Number two, you have to learn from your mistakes. The more mistakes you do, the more opportunities you have, right? Third is complete your syllabus knowledge-wise so that you don't skip or miss out anything. And fourth, practice with mocks are really crucial. No, fantastic points there, there is man, and uh, the students will be taking down notes. Have a good sip of your tea. Um, there, time management, marks, not leaving the tuition to the last moment, getting advice from other people who've already done it in that in who've been in that position that you're in. If you're working full time, like like yourself. You've you've got practical experience working at the big four. That these are challenges that students are facing all around the world 
and you're not alone on it. So I hope the advice and the tips that Rizvan has, has brilliantly put across there uh, help out. And if you have any questions, you can always leave us a comment down below. Myself and the team uh, for Viffy will more than happy get back to you on there. Uh, if you want any other sort of follow up advice, maybe about the CBE platform, technical articles, or, or more information that could help you out to pass your next exam on there. Shall we get on to question number two, Rizvan? Is that cool with you or any other yeah, final great, points? Great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, quick, quick question number two, ladies and gentlemen, now. Deep breath. What <laughs> should you do? if you fail an ACCA exam? This is the question that I get after results day. You see it on LinkedIn, people post about, you know, the score they got, the thank yous, but there are a lot of students out there. And as you know, Rizwan from teaching PM, FM, APM, the PM and APM exam has a pass rate of about 35 to 40%. So talk us through Rizwan, what should a student do if they were to sadly fail their ACCA exam and how to come back stronger? Right. A very nice question. And uh, thankfully, uh, you just specified very clearly by mentioning PM and APM, <laughs> because these two papers, you know, uh, definitely anybody who teaches this entire stream, they, they know the pain, right? Their students go through. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, first of all, James, as I said earlier, it's a professional examination. So students should keep this in their mind that maybe they, they can flunk, they, they can fail the examination. I'm not saying that you should do or it should be your aim, but you should be mentally ready for it because sometimes uh, with, with your work life, things like that, you might not be able to focus on it. Now, once you have failed, for example, and obviously we, we just saw the result this time as well, uh, there were so many students, you receive messages, we receive messages here, they, they need the guidance. So one thing I always say to the students uh, uh, is that uh, once you have failed the paper, I will repeat my same point. First of all, you have to realize where things went wrong. That realization is key. And I always say, I don't know whether people take this seriously or not, you have to sit with yourself, okay, for two, three, maybe five, maybe 10, maybe 15 minutes, right, alone in isolation with no WhatsApp, uh, no Instagram, nothing, okay, not replying to anyone. Just think what went wrong. Obviously, ACCA has a very thorough process of examination and checking the papers. Definitely, there is some lacking in you. That is where, that is why you, you uh, were not able to pass. Now, the key issues why students fail, I just want to mention certain uh, key things that I have experienced in these 17 years teaching uh, these uh, uh, students around the globe is that number one, uh, time management. Yeah, people are really weak in time management. And thanks to ACCA, the way they now uh, give exam review report to the students and they send us. And James, you must have seen that. We also see this. It is clearly mentioned right at the top where they have given you time management distribution, right, in terms of percentage. It clearly shows that students are lacking in terms of time management. And the reason for that is we are not practicing considering the time bounding we have. We should practice keeping in mind that I have, for example, uh, for example, 1.8 minutes per mark, okay? If I take this as a standard, so a skilled student in solving one uh, section B question should take 18 minutes, right? 36 minutes for a CRQ. Students, you should practice according to the time limits and see how can we expect a good time management on that day of pressure when mm -hmm. everything negative is coming in our head? You have to do the rehearsals again before that. Keep a timer in front of you. Set the time at Wi-Fi. We, we have certain sections by the name of test yourself. Okay. And I, I give a simple message to my students. These sections are time-based practice sessions for you people. So what you guys do, you 
practice time based you will improve in terms of time management and that uh, is one of the reason for the failure a major reason so work on mocks practice time based you will improve that secondly i did mention earlier as well i have to go back to that point people leave things they don't cover things completely please don't do this acca will ask things that are part of the syllabus you cannot uh, do uh, a question spotting i would say no this will come this will not come you cannot pick up the topics and generally what what i've seen james what people do a topic that they don't like much they are like this will not come man this will not be tested <laughs> i don't know whether it came in their dreams or not and sometimes because of the short of time james what they do you know they send me a message just 10 days before sir now i'm left with these 10 days now you tell me which topic should i focus on <laughs> now what should i say if i say okay focus on 5 and leave 3 then ultimately if something came from those 3 so they come back to you said it and because of you it happened so my message is my friends complete the entire syllabus don't leave things because this also becomes a major reason of failure then something specific to skill and professional students skill students you need a good set of knowledge uh, and expertise as well because you are dealing with section a section b section c these three require three different skill sets okay section a 15 as an example of pm i can take 15 ot's isolated ot's these are the ot's my friends those require concepts to be right and just have to apply the knowledge and solve there and one thing fill in the blank questions where rounding off is a major issue rounding off is a major issue so do learn those things section b students sorry students appearing for section b questions remember that five ot's are connected with the scenario you cannot treat these five isolated as you did in section a you have to have a good grip over the scenario read it properly so that you can relate those with the scenario those those five ot's crq is a different world man the word itself makes it clear constructed response questions right to construct your responses so for that you have to use spreadsheet you have to uh, type the answers on word processor the more you use acca platform it's beautiful man use acca platform it's a very good platform you have there are past papers there are updated past papers there so practice on platform that will not only help you in time management but will give you the confidence of using the software on the day of examination because you must be you know uh, accustomed to the software when you go into the examination so what i think is again i want to just bring key things in front of you people as i said uh, time management is what you should improve time based practice is very key for you people you should make sure that you do time based practice secondly again conceptually cover each and everything don't uh, just guess okay this will come this will not come and neither put your teachers in a position where they have to pick and choose the topic for you people right mm -hmm. and third as i said practice on cbe platform is very key one thing for learning perspective james you will agree with me is examiner report oh i love examiner mm -hmm. reports to be honest because you know students have no opportunity to talk to the examiner yeah everybody will agree with me right i always say to my students see these exam reports are not only meant or 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 written for the tutors these are written for the students as well i think more for the students i should say examiner is talking to you now if one fine morning someone says hello james you are the examiner and james say okay come on and the examiner ask questions in front of me whatever you want to ask there will be thousand thousand students will connect on zoom to talk to the examiner this report is examiner for you so yes read examiner reports you will learn a lot from it what your friends have done wrong in the past you should not repeat it make sure you read recent examiner reports uh, so that you do get the understanding what went wrong and last is technical articles uh, 
there are two types of articles I can summarize. One is topic based articles. Okay. If you are weak in a certain topic, go and read the article. That's fine. But there are certain general articles that give you the tips, how to pass, tricks. Those are the articles that students should read and definitely take benefit from those because those again are helpful and considering what people have done in wrong in the past, those are written from that perspective. So I think these are the key things any student should do who have failed in any of their attempts and uh, I'm sure this will help them to pass. Oh, brilliant. Thank you, Rizwan, on there. Absolutely stellar tips and it's all flooding back from my days of sadly failing the advanced taxation exam oh. and, 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 and sadly failing the advanced audit assurance exam. But as you said, reflecting on, I mean, when I did mine, we, we never knew sort of how you got on on different sections, how you got on with your timing. So you had to mentally go back and just say to yourself, how did it go on the exam day? What went right? What went wrong? And then utilize, you can find it on your My ACCA, see how you got on in the timings. It breaks down the syllabus areas. Uh, and then the only other thing I'd add to that was I, I used to write down the fail number on a oh. piece of paper and, and put it on my wall <laughs> as well. So when, when I came in from work and I'm just tired and I really didn't want to do any studying, I just looked at that number and I just went, no, not again. So anything like that, guys, put it into practice. I know it sounds silly, but then people who'd come into your house or your flat would go, why is there a 43 on your wall? And, oh, no, I've got to tell them now that I failed the exam. That's that, that's that's absolutely fantastic on there, Rizwan, and some some super top tips that students can practically put in to their to their revision plans. I can't advocate enough external examiners reports, technical articles, CBE platform, and, and just working out where your weak areas are. And, and it's, it's all based on you. So fantastic tips on there. Or if you've sadly failed an ACCA exam, and then what to do to come back to get that pass for it. We're going to move on to question number three now on there. And this is where Rizwan's experience over all of those years are going to come to fruition as to mistakes that ACCA students do not want to make ahead of their next exam. So Rizwan, your top tutor tips as to from all of the students you've taught over the years, what are those common mistakes that students sadly make, which is the difference in them getting a pass or not? Okay, before I start these uh, the discussion in relation to the mistakes, I did like your uh, a technique to post a paper on a wall like like you're sleeping and sometimes you wake up at night and like oh 43 <laughs> come on let's start and start studying it's, it's good to keep you, yourself motivated in relation to these things okay now coming to your question of uh, mistakes AC students uh, should not do obviously uh, before their examination uh, don't overthink don't overthink because sometimes uh, I have seen a lot when they're near to the examination, they're like, sir, we are losing out information from our head. Now, that's totally psychological and negative mindset. I do remember my days where I used to give the examination two, three days before uh, negative vibes should come uh, and like, okay, I'm forgetting the concept. It's not that. See, if you have done the hard work, you'll not forget it. Just have confidence in your preparation. So the first thing is, don't overthink. Okay, this is what I'm forgetting. This might come, this might not come. No, you keep yourself focused. The plan that you have made earlier, just stick to it, cover the things according to that. Number two, I don't like people who are over smart a bit, you know, uh, because this is also a problem I've seen. Like, okay, I'm confident I'll be able to make it, man. Uh, okay, last time I did SBL like this, I'll do same for API, I'll pass. Previous success story should not be followed. Now, this is strange. People might say, what are you saying here? If your previous success story gave you a pass due to some luck, so don't follow that. <laughs> Because luck will not repeat every time, you know. Last time you studied for 15 hours or so and like, come on, you passed. That was your good day. 
things that came in the examination you were good at you you able to make it so that should not be the practice for all the upcoming papers or the next paper that you, that you are giving so yeah over smartness i don't like as such yes you have to uh, be thankful every time keep on practicing continue the hard work continue the hard work till the last day uh, uh, before the examination uh, and next thing uh, i've seen james well prepared students and you all obviously must have uh, seen such things well prepared students they keep on studying till the last minute before the examination what is that if you study all night one night before the paper how you'll be able to perform on the day of examination that's not possible at all you have to keep this relaxed before the paper because you have to use this for 3 hours right so please make sure that before examination have a good sleep good 8 hours sleep 7 hours sleep uh, eat something before you go to the examination so that you have that energy to utilize what you have done in the past okay so keep yourself relaxed before the paper that is also very important i know that's general but sometimes these non financials do work a lot right uh, for me i would give an example that as an APM tutor, we focus a lot on non-financials and we say, okay, financials are important, non-financials are very important as well. So for me, these are non-financials, like having a, a relaxed mindset, energy going in the examination, so you can perform really good. One thing I want to uh, give message from this platform is during, when we are solving the exam, okay, when, when we are actually dealing with a paper, sometimes we see a topic a question as we skim the requirements we are like oh this is something i don't know come on now the reverse cycle starts from there see it is for sure that 100 percent things will not be clear for you you will do mistakes we are human beings in fact ai also does a lot of mistakes i've seen right <laughs> so human beings will do mistakes you will not be in a position that you know each and everything 100%. That's wrong. So my friends, if there are certain requirements, something you're not sure in the exam, leave it because the first target is to pass. And how you pass is at 50%, right? So you have to target the easy marks, the easy numbers in the examination. You focus on easy marks, easy numbers in the examination, so you can grab easy 15 marks. My message here is don't get negative while you're solving the paper. Just keep on solving it. The objective should be to complete the paper within the time frame. Okay? No negative thinkings, and I'm sure you'll be able to make it. So certain non-financial tips I would say would be in on the day of examination, be relaxed, have the energy, solve the entire paper. Before that, no overthinking, no uh, over smartness, I would say, and along with that, all the things that I mentioned earlier in terms of the common mistake, you should not repeat in terms of time management issues, just resolve it, practice, do mocks, read examiner uh, reports for the learning perspective, and last, on top of it, remain positive. Remain positive. It is just an examination. If you didn't pass, nothing will happen. Focus on the next attempt, remain positive, and give your paper with best efforts. And what as humans we can do is work hard. Okay. So let's work hard and then and then leave the rest to God. Uh, we just have to work hard. That's it. And our job is done once we have done the right thing in the right way. And then obviously success will come to us. Fantastic. Wow, some absolutely amazing points in there. Uh, Rizwan, and I completely agree. Uh, you got me thinking about when I was an ACCA student, turning up to exams just tired, jaded, not really clear minded because I was fatigued from studying too much the day before. I'd only add to what you've said setting targets. I, I, I think setting targets to have tuition finished at this point, targets to do mock papers, all going to help um, on there for, for mistakes not to make. And just the. I didn't realize until I read some of the examiner's reports that some students only answer 85 marks. 
90 marks on there. Even just getting the full 100, you're, you're at a massive advantage, oh. but that only comes with doing past papers on the CBE platform two time under exam conditions. And those are some fantastic tips to help students who are watching this as to those are some mistakes that we would definitely recommend that you do not make ahead of your next ACCA exam. But sadly, everyone, that brings us to a close for today's lovely podcast. I must say, Rizwan, thank you so much for all of your insights today. It's been a pleasure to meet and to speak with you. And if any students have got any questions for us, are they able to leave a, a comment down below? Or what was the best way to get in touch with the, uh, with the VIFI team? Uh, um, definitely, they can uh, place the comments in the comment section. And uh, I myself will be... Uh, looking at the comments my team will be looking at the comments uh, we will be there to help you people uh, we'll also place our contact details as well you can contact us and whatever we can do for you people whatever help we can we'll be able to do for you people we'll be happy to help you people fantastic well thank you very much guys make sure you give this video a massive like and subscribe to both of our channels and we will see you again for another lovely podcast so again rizwan thank you so much thank you for the invitation thank and you very guys much. we will see you again next time thank you man. take care bye